the produce aisle at your local grocery store is far more plentiful than the fresh fruit and vegetable section of the early 20th century. There is relatively year-round access to a wide variety of citrus, tomatoes, apples and lettuce. But recent events have cast a shadow over the safety and wholesome nature of fresh produce. Last fall, many Americans discovered a disturbing gap in our nation's food security. The FDA says do not eat it. The nation's food supply is at risk. Since the FDA's warning came out Friday, packaged spinach has disappeared from supermarket shelves. The fall 2006 outbreak of E. coli, originating from California spinach fields, was blamed for three deaths and illnesses in more than 200 people. Today, the search to ensure the safety of America's produce industry is ongoing. Government officials and private industry leaders have yet to reach a consensus on what methods can guarantee consumer safety. E. coli 0157H7 is easier to kill than, say, listeria or salmonella. Harlan Clemens says last fall's outbreak could have been prevented. He claims that the technology to protect consumers already is used on many beef products across the country and is 100 percent safe. Clemens, who operates the Sioux City, Iowa Corporation, Sadex, says the industry's answer is electronic beam irradiation, or e-beam. Based on technological advances during the Reagan administration's Star Wars program of the 1980s, food irradiation is commonly used to zap meat products with supercharged beams of radiation. Clemens compares the machine to a highly concentrated microwave oven that consumes the energy equivalent of a 15-home city block. The E-beam sends electrons flying through food products at virtually the speed of light, killing dangerous bacteria while leaving food safe to eat and visibly unharmed. It'll have the same flavor, it'll have the same uh, texture, crunchiness, um, smell, everything's basically the same. You won't notice anything different between treated product and untreated product. Clemens has so much faith in his E-beam machine, he proposed eating spinach intentionally laced with E. coli as long as it was irradiated at his Sioux City, Iowa facility. Market to Market took his request for E. coli lay spinach to Midwest Labs, an independent commercial laboratory in Omaha, Nebraska. Technicians at Midwest Labs took three store purchased bags of spinach, using two bags as E. coli test samples and the third as a controlled clean sample. The 0157H7 strain of E. coli was prepared in a common spray bottle by Midwest Labs and applied to two full bags of spinach. The potentially lethal strain, nearly identical to last fall's virulent California E. coli outbreak, could cause serious health complications, including kidney failure. It's a known pathogenic organism, and it can kill people. And yes, the, the number of people that are affected by it and the number of people that die from it were relatively few, but yet when you consider that all right, it is something that potentially could be addressed and could be changed, no, I don't think it is, it is an, an overreaction of, uh, of, of, say, the industry to that or the population to that. Lab technicians at Midwest Labs processed and sealed three bags of spinach in a styrofoam container. Market to Market then transported the spinach 100 miles north to Sioux City, Iowa, where Sadex employees were ready for processing. After sending the spinach through the Sadex irradiation machine, company staff took the produce to Harlan Clements. After rinsing the spinach with water and applying scoopfuls of Thousand Island dressing, Thousand Island. Clemens remained true to his word. Eating produce laced with E. coli and sent under a concentrated beam of radiation. You know, I am confident this is safe. Despite Clemens' assurance of safe produce, we took the irradiated spinach back to Midwest Labs for further tests. The lab report was conclusive. Spinach laced with E. coli by Midwest Labs had more than 100 million individual E. coli bacteria before it went under the Sadex E-beam. After the irradiation process, there were only 100 bacterial organisms in the spinach sample, a dramatic 99.999% drop in E. coli. According to Dr. Jerry King, the lab's quality control director, the remaining trace of E. coli is far too low to affect a consumer's health. 
in terms of the science behind e-beaming and the, the method that e-beam works, I feel it to be a very safe and a very effective form of removal of bacteria from food. The results were not a surprise to Harlan Clements, who consumed the spinach without hesitation and did not suffer any health ailments following our visit. But Clemens does have a problem. A radiation has not been approved by the FDA for produce. Politicians and government officials are still wrangling over the technology's future application. With or without regulation, it is incumbent upon the individual companies and our industry as a whole to act to improve food safety. In April, the House Energy and Commerce Committee held hearings to determine a solution for produce safety. Is there some uh, method that you could expose your product to that would definitively remove E. coli bacteria as well as salmonella? At this point, we don't have uh, a kill step as that would be defined for fresh produce. Now, irradiation, I guess, can be used in meat products, but can ir irradiation be used in Ve Ra vegetables? Yeah, radiation has not been approved for use by the FDA on fruits and vegetables. Okay. The lack of a kill step for produce, such as either irradiation or grilling for beef, is why Sadex would like to offer its services to the fruit and vegetable industry. And in recent months, the Food and Drug Administration has shown growing support for certain fruit and vegetable products. But consumer groups have warned that irradiation is harmful, unsafe, and in some cases damages the nutritional composition of produce. Harlan Clemens disagrees. People claim that um, there will be cell damage and there would be at higher doses, but at the dose levels that's needed to get a four or five uh, law reduction in pathogens, there's no cell damage, no damage to the, to the product. It's still crunchy, um, still tastes like spinach. While Clemens hopes his irradiation technology for produce will achieve <laughs> FDA approval, any future change is far too late to help the hundreds of sick individuals and three deceased consumers from last fall's outbreak. For Market to Market, I'm Andrew Bott.